keep facilitation and planning from becoming overwhelming. And, um, you know, I think we probably all have been in the position where um, you've gotten some feedback, either directly or indirectly, that the process felt overwhelming or the session felt overwhelming or, you know, anything along those lines, which is really um, always a bit tough to hear. So just wonder if there are any practical tips um, that folks have um, employed or deployed um, that keep the process from being overwhelming. So one of the things that I always try to do, and I think it's really great in Miro, but it works physically as well, is just that the wall that you create is your visual agenda. And that always tends to really, really help uh, people feel anchored um, and understand where you're going. Um, and seeing it visually really does the trick on that. So visual agendas, I think, and I literally mean like, not like, of, of course, we all know to put agendas on posters. I don't mean that. I mean, actually, like the wall is built out uh, with the spaces that you're going to work through. Um, tends to work. The other thing that I think is really interesting, again, just to add to the party on this, using Miro is fantastic. It is also can be overwhelming in and of its own, or mural, whatever you're using, in and of its own right. So we tend to make sure that we cover up areas that um, don't need to be seen right now. And then I also have another um, kind of a, like best practice I always think about, which is people remember what they see more than they remember what they hear. And so that's always, I think, really super, super important in the context of visual capture and visual anchoring and our jobs as summarizing and synthesizing and being very um, simple and clear about how we're documenting every part of the process, which tends to make people feel less overwhelmed. You know, a lot of sticky notes feels really overwhelming and just that visual noise can, can add to the, you know, can add to the um, emotional um, energy, I would say. So, um, Yep, Tommy, I think that's right as well. Describe or give an example of what might be feeling overwhelming. Um, that's, yep, that's super helpful. Any any other tips like that that Tommy just shared um, that you've employed or deployed that have um, been a trick to keep this process from feeling overwhelming? You know, We've been using recently little mood meters at the end of sessions. They're kind of fun. They're kind of silly. Um, but especially if you have, uh, you're working with a group that will take place over multiple sessions or days, giving them a space to anonymously kind of identify how they're feeling on an emotional spectrum after the session um, and places for feedback. And then, you know, as a facilitator, you can adjust from there if you see folks are feeling stressed or overwhelmed or feel like it's getting boring or not going fast enough. So those, they're kind of silly, but mood meters are kind of fun. That's awesome. That's right. Um, that's great, Cameron. That's a great tip. Um, and then Matthew mentioned, just to add into this so we get it on the board too, Matthew, Matthew mentioned that usage of color, absolutely color associations, both positive and negative, being super sensitive to that. Um, given, uh, Ryan's saying, giving everyone permission to settle uh, for strategy V1, absolutely. Brian, you're off mute. Please add to that thought. <laughs> well, only to clarify, that's the sort of quick and dirty version of strategy, something to get you going, something to get everybody back to work, focused on something, but knowing that you've got to come back and do more work on customer use cases and, and the overall general direction of the business. So avoiding trying to boil the ocean on the first pass, settle for something small and a win, and then work longer, harder, deeper on the bigger strategy. That's what that means. That That is so right on. And, you know, honestly, if we take on board the idea that OKRs have been so great with us about, which is that notion of essentially like a quarterly continuous improvement process. But, you know, that quarterly process needs to be in context of the year, which needs to be in context of a multi-year. But even if we just take a piece of that and start to work on it and start, start to show momentum and start to show engagement and start to show the way the team is working better and start to show how those results are being driven a bit more, that does all of us 
uh, a favor in the context of making our processes useful, uh, myth busting that these things take too much time, they're too complicated, they're too overwhelming. We just spend a lot of times in meetings. So again, I think really taking that on board, kind of like agile planning, um, really helps with this. And then Taffy, you mentioned standardizing your agenda. You know, one of the things about likely all of us on the call today are conceptual thinkers. And oftentimes conceptual thinkers throw off the folks that are not, that live in a, in a more um, concrete space and all of those different thinking styles and, and employing those different um, methods to help people feel really settled. A standard agenda is definitely one of those. Um, and so that's just another really good example. Brian, please feel free to add to. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, I, I'm often in a facilitation sort of position and because I'm older, I get away with saying things like, this has been a really good session. We've really moved forward a long way. Even though sometimes I think, crikey, we've got a distance yet to go uh, because everybody needs to feel a success point. Yeah, yeah, me included. We all just need to know we've done something all right. And then there's more buy-in for the next round. Amazing. No, you know, that is exactly right. So you, we're all thinking about every like the, how big the process is, but you're that's right. So let's we know this, but like again, taking it on board and celebrating the wins and letting people know that they're doing a, like where they're at is killer and fabulous. And well, exactly. um, it's not it's not being disingenuous because we have moved forward. But you, it, it's not scaring the living daylights out of everyone else because you, 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 at least I sometimes see crikey the distance we've yet to go. But That's you. right. I love that. Okay, cool. And there's a lot of amazing other ideas in here as well. I'm just going to pick the, the two uh, prioritizing and strategic initiatives. That's absolutely right, Tommy. Not trying to do it all. Um, and then creating personas, right? Absolutely. So we understand, um, yeah who we're working with, who's in the room, what they like and they dislike.